Ahoy mateys! Welcome back to another Cambridge Admissions video. I am currently back home in Singapore. I am in a hotel quarantine because I have to quarantine for 14 days. So I am back in my home country but I'm not back home. But I thought it's interview season and, and I think the interviews are starting in like a day or two and I really really wanted to film this Q&A video because I got a lot of questions after my previous video. Also since I was filming like a Natsuki interview video, I thought I'd dress up all like biological so I have like my cactus earrings here that like a friend gifted for my birthday and this top just has like lots of fruits like there's some strawberry there and like these are some, supposed to be like grapes and like um tomatoes and like squash it's just like a really quirky top with like an abstract take on fruits <laughs> so i thought i'd dress up like that <laughs> so without any further ado let's get sailing <laughs> So before I begin, I just wanted to say that I had my Biological Natural Sciences interview last year in Singapore in person. I know that the interviews happening this year are not in person, they're going to be virtual, but I hope that a lot of these answers I'm going to give might still be applicable. My answers will be more Natsuki based, so please keep this in mind. Things might differ for other courses. Question number one, how did you prepare? I actually had less than a two week notice, 11 days to be precise. I did the IB diploma program at school, so I basically just revised the whole of my IB biology higher level syllabus. In my previous videos where I talk about the exact interview questions I was asked, you get to know that I was actually asked a couple chemistry questions as well. So in retrospect, I should have also revised my chemistry syllabus in detail. <laughs> To be safe, if you're doing the IBDP, A-levels or any other curriculum, it's best to be thorough with your science and math subjects if you're sitting a Natsuki interview. Remember, they know what subjects you've taken from your application form. Another important aspect of my interview preparation involved going through my internship and job shadowing notes. So last summer, I had done an internship in a cell culture laboratory as well as job shadowed in a hospital laboratory. And I made very comprehensive notes during both these experiences. In fact, the answer I gave to one of the questions I was asked during my interview was actually inspired from a part of these notes. So I personally think it's very useful to properly document and make notes if you attend an internship, job shadowing or any sort of experience because it might come in handy. It can also be useful for you to reflect on any science related experiences you've had, perhaps some anecdotes and what you learned from them because you may be able to talk about this in your interview as well. For example, I performed a technique called micro-pivoting at my internship and I learned how to do this over the course of my internship and at the end of those two weeks, I realized how much concentration, precision and patience it requires. And it was only during my internship that I got to experience and witness this firsthand, which really gave me a clearer idea of how it is to have a career in research and be in the lab working on a project. Question number two, did I get nervous before the interview? So actually, as soon as my school realized that a few students got Oxford interviews, they arranged for mock interviews with some teachers from our school. I had two mock interviews at school, but I'm not gonna lie, I think they actually stressed me out more than they helped me. I was really glad that my school was trying to help us, but in retrospect, I realized that those mock interviews were honestly nothing like how the actual interview was. My teachers had asked me a lot of current science questions, lots of open-ended questions about my passion for science, what I think about certain ethical issues concerning some fields of research, questions like that which I did not feel confident answering. In fact, I even had a mini breakdown afterwards because I did not feel ready for a Cambridge interview. I must add, however, I did feel quite calm right before my interview. And that was to do with some calming techniques that I followed, which I think is very important. You know yourself the best, so right before your interview, try to calm your mind and just put yourself at ease. Because walking into the interview room with any level of even relative calmness is better than nothing at all. I recommend listening to some soothing tunes or hymns if you're into that, drinking lots of water, and just closing your eyes and breathing deeply and mindfully for a few minutes, especially just before your interview. These were the things that I did when I was literally waiting outside my interview room on that chair and this really helped calm my nerves and help me get into that zen headspace. 
So yes, everyone does get nervous. I was nervous and it's perfectly normal to feel nervous and anxious before your interview. But more importantly, try and figure out what techniques work to calm you down, to calm your nerves. Because then you have control over yourself even when you do feel nervous and anxious. Number three, is clothing important? I feel like these are the kind of questions that no one really thinks about except for the days that lead up to the interview. Of course, this is mostly a matter of personal preference, but I would recommend sticking to smart casuals just to be safe. Lots of people go to interviews in full formals, and considering that the interviews usually happen on campus in Cambridge in winter, I don't think that you'd feel hot in formals per se. So there's absolutely nothing wrong in going in full formals if you feel comfortable and confident in that. And those are two words that I really think you should keep in mind when picking out your interview outfit. The last thing you want to be conscious of during your interview is your outfit. So pick an outfit that you feel comfortable and confident in, not what your parent or your friend or your sibling asks you to wear to the interview. This is what I wore to my Cambridge interview. I love loose flowy pants, so that's what I wore as my bottoms. I'm also someone who feels really cold really fast, but also get quite sweaty when it's hot. So I chose this plain, comfortable, cotton long sleeve top that I could roll up the sleeves off in case it gets hot, but just leave as it is if it was like a cooler environment. Question number four, how important is knowing subject content? So all you need to know is your high school subject content. Any knowledge you have beyond this might be beneficial, but it definitely, definitely is not required. So in my opinion, rather than going online and skimming through these hundreds of abstracts of scientific papers or articles or pop science books, I'd recommend spending that time really cementing your high school syllabus content and having all of that knowledge at your fingertips. Most of the questions are structured in a way that they build on existing knowledge and that existing knowledge being your high school syllabus content. For example, three out of four of my interview questions were directly answered by my IV syllabus content. Having said that, interviewers do tend to be very helpful. And they're not testing whether you've memorized all of the knowledge you've ever been given in high school, but instead how you're able to use that knowledge. So in my interview, there were certain questions that were directly answered from my high school syllabus content and I knew that, but I blanked out so I didn't really remember that those pieces of information, my interviewer did nudge me towards the right answer. So they will hint or prompt you in case you do blank out even with the things that they know were in your high school syllabus. So the chances of you ever being stuck in one corner just because you blanked out with some information relating to your high school syllabus is very unlikely if you're able to think out loud and let them know that you are struggling. For example, you could just be saying this simple statement such as, I'm sorry, I remember studying this in school, but I seem to be forgetting it at this moment or I'm not too sure about that. And this will give them a chance to hint or prompt you or nudge you towards the right direction. Question number five. Are there any myths that you've come across about Cambridge interviews? Oh, so many. <laughs> and so many that I believed before my interview. Number one is that Cambridge interviewers are scary. And I will tell you, no, they are not. My interviewer was genuinely so kind and helpful and his presence never, never felt intimidating. He really did do everything he could to put me at ease. I have a small anecdote to share which might be relevant to this point actually. So a girl from my school that I knew had her Bionatsky interview right before mine and I knew she had the exact same interviewer as me. Right after my interview, I called her up to check how her interview went. And that's when we realized that we actually had the exact same questions. But what really surprised me was when she said that she found her interviewer to be quite rude, impatient or like something along those lines. It was then that I realized that the exact same factors can translate into such varied experiences for different people, which I think is really important to remember. Especially in situations like an interview, the interviewer can really feed off your energy. So the energy that you bring into the room can be quite infectious. So number one, always try and be polite, kind and curious because I think this translates into an overall good impression of you. But number two, doesn't really apply to perhaps the interviewees taking the interview this year, but for future interviewees. If you're ever in a waiting area or a waiting room with other applicants who have just finished giving their interview and they had the same interviewer that you have or they're doing interview for the same course that you're going for, try not to be too affected by how they said their interview went. 
In fact, I'd go as far as to say to avoid too much people interaction before your interview simply because people's energy can be so infectious and you really don't want to risk being around any sort of negative energy that can rub off you because that can really affect you mentally before your interview. Okay, myth number three is that the interviewers are looking out for every possible flaw in you and your answers and they're looking for this one perfect polished answer to this super duper hard question. And no, they are not interested in perfect polished answers. Ultimately, they are looking for whether you are going to be a good fit for the university and whether you're going to be a teachable student. So try and treat the interview as a sort of teacher-student interaction. So if you don't understand anything, just like how in school you would ask your teacher, ask your interviewer to clarify what they mean um, by a certain concept or a key term, or perhaps you simply just didn't understand their accent. They are always ready to help you, hint you, prompt you, but only if they know that you are struggling. So it's very important for you to be vocal about all the things that you're struggling with and more importantly, be vocal about your thought process. The interviewers are more interested in your thought process and how you arrive at a certain answer. They want you to take them through your thought process so they can see how you process any new information that's presented to you and how you make sense of that. Of course, there are certain answers that won't make perfect sense scientifically but if that's the case they will tell you and they themselves will redirect you in case you're going down that path but just because some things don't make perfect scientific sense does not mean that there's only one correct answer right another sort of related point is that during the course of your interview you might notice that some of the questions are not really distinct from each other they tend to build up on one another so in that case you are sometimes presented with some new or extra information and the conclusion you derive from that might be contradictory to an answer you perhaps just gave to a previous question. At this point, it's advisable to think out loud and explain to your interviewer why you think that your previous answer might not make the most sense in this present scenario, integrating the new pieces of information that you've just been given. Just because you're now changing your answer in response to some new pieces of information doesn't mean that you've messed up. In fact, I'd argue that it's an admirable trait of a candidate because they're not attached to their past answer and are able to be flexible in their thought process to accommodate and make sense of contradictory ideas to derive a new and improved conclusion. A perfect example of this was when I was asked the question, what evolves faster, plants or animals? And in my previous video, I kind of talked through the discussion I had with my interviewer for this question and you can see that I did change my thought process and my answer multiple times during the course of that discussion. Question number six, what was the scariest part of your interview? I mean, to be very honest, I don't think any part of my interview was scary per se. I might use other adjectives to describe it like thrilling or exciting, but I don't think I found anything particularly scary. The only time I guess my heart kind of just stopped for a second was when my interviewer asked me why I dropped higher level math. And at that point, I really just thought I lost any chance of getting in. But later on, he said it was just because I solved the math question rather quickly. So then I kind of calmed down. But that was the only time I was like, oh, no. <laughs> question number seven. Are there any resources you could share about mock interview questions? So I think my previous video does give a sort of a good idea of how a Cambridge interview progresses and the sort of structure to a Cambridge interview. So please go check that out if you haven't already. Apart from this, my school did give us a sort of booklet with Oxbridge interview questions. Keep in mind that this contains Oxford interview questions as well, which I think do tend to be a bit different from Cambridge interview questions, at least for the sciences. So I will link down a PDF in the description box below if I can. So you could read through that. But please remember that there are multiple approaches that you could take to answer a question. And the answers in the PDF below are just an example of how a candidate can answer a question. By no means is this the exemplar answers to a question. Question number eight. Do you recommend looking into the research or specialization of your college department faculty? So I would say you could look into it perhaps just for your own sake to satisfy your curiosity. But in my experience, the interview time is so short and packed by itself that there's barely any time for these short, general, getting to know you sort of questions. Of course, you can always look up your interviewer using their name and the kind of work that they've done and read about that, which could give you something to talk about to your interviewer perhaps after your interview if you just want to bring up something really exciting you read about their work with them. But I didn't really do this and I don't think it's necessary at all. If you just have extra time and you're curious, you could do this. <laughs> Question number nine. 
how much emphasis should we place on being able to answer questions about our personal statement? Okay, so I personally wasn't asked a single thing about my personal statement, which I was quite sad about because I quite like my personal statement. <laughs> this is a very interviewer dependent sort of question. I know that some interviewers like to use the personal statement as a segue into the actual interview to make the candidate more relaxed and allow them to answer a couple questions based on something that they most probably are comfortable answering. So the personal statement questions are usually just used as an icebreaker kind of questions. I definitely recommend reading through your personal statement again because it's likely that you wrote it many months before your actual interview takes place. So just be familiar with what you've actually written in your personal statement in case you are asked to talk about it. But apart from that, I really don't think you should spend too much time worrying about the specifics of what you wrote in your personal statement and being able to explain every single thing from there. Question number 10 is actually my most favorite one. It asks for any confidence tips. So all the previous questions were sort of based on preparation tips, but it's important to keep in mind that as much as you can prepare for an interview, there's always going to be a million other things that are going to be out of your control. The only thing that you can certainly have control over is your mind and how you are feeling and behaving. And only when you have control over that can you display any sort of confidence. So I think the best interview skill or perhaps life skill to have is to bring yourself back to this place of calmness and confidence no matter what else is happening around you. So we all hear horror stories of candidates breaking down and crying during the interview or candidates like blanking out um, after a certain question they were asked, which happened to me quite a few times during the interview. So rather than thinking of it as a fearful or this nerve-wracking experience in which you're just going to be judged for every single word you're going to say, try and think of your interview from an angle of gratitude or positive disbelief, if that makes sense, that you're having this opportunity to interact with an academic that's perhaps at the top of their field and has done all these really cool pieces of work in their life. I kept reminding myself of this and that really helped convert my anxiety into curiosity and some sort of healthy excitement. <laughs> Try not to place too much emphasis on the interview. Remember it is a holistic process and the interview is just one aspect of the admissions tutors analyzing your application. More importantly, don't place too much emphasis on the outcome of the interview. Try and focus on really relishing every moment and being present in your interview because it's definitely an incredible experience and one that you perhaps wouldn't get the chance to experience anytime soon. Remind yourself that the outcome of the interview does not dictate your self-worth. I kept telling myself, just give your best and leave the rest. And this really helped me be more calm and confident before my interview. So that's all for the questions. At the end, I'd just like to say that just remember that there are so many students currently at Cambridge who thought that their interview was honestly a nightmare. And obviously they still made it in. And there are so many students who thought their interview went pretty well, but they didn't make it in. So it's very difficult for you to be the judge of your own interview. So leave that job to the admissions tutors. Instead of breaking your head worrying about the outcome, just try and be present in your interview and just enjoy every moment of it. Good luck to all of you giving the interview soon and I really hope this Q&A session as well as the previous interview video gives you a better idea of what to expect during your Cambridge interview. Please do share this video with anyone you think this might be helpful for. Please do leave a like down below and comment on what you would like to see next from me. And don't forget to subscribe. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!